We now take you to Paris, the city of love, during the summer of 1926. It is the center of Europe, shining electric luminescence into the night sky while its inhabitants languidly saunter through their nighttime activities. Jazz music wafts through the air and the proud taxi fleet flows through the veins of the city, keeping it alive. Stabbing into the night sky is the famous Eiffel Tower, ninth wonder of the modern world. Tonight, it welcomes a not-so-famous guest, a certain Los Angeles policeman and his simian partner. Mike Sullivan anxiously checks his watch. How should I know? I'm not even sure if he's really coming. Not really. I could care less if he shows up. I'm just doing it as a favor to Miss Kingsley. Dickie's exhibit is on display at the Louvre, she says. You two should absolutely meet up at the party. Monsieur, will you be boarding the elevator car at this time? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, Frenchie. For all we know, he's probably already at the restaurant. Go right now, Monsieur. Great, thanks. <laughs> Got me. Who knew the League of Nations had a police force, much less that they hold parties every year? I'm not going to pass up a free trip to Paris, though. Even if it means bringing your sorry mug along. <laughs> Could this elevator take any longer? No, monsieur, it cannot. Most guests enjoy the scenic view of Gay Paris rather than conversing with their pets. Are you getting fresh with me, pal? I am merely answering your query. My feelings about your sanity and imaginings regarding your relations with your furry companion played no factor in my previous comment. Oh. Okay. I think. We have arrived, monsieur. What's your step? Officer Sullivan? Agent DuPont? But of course, at last we meet. How'd you know it was me? <laughs> uh, all right. Even in Paris, you both make an unusual sight. You had no trouble with customs, I hope? Surprisingly, no. You guys will let anyone into this country. As I said, we are used to the unusual. Where is Monsieur Broughton? Good question. Well, I hope he can make it. I am a large fan of his adventures. Most people are until they meet him. Pardon? Look, Agent DuPont, I don't mean to be rude, but why am I here? I'm sorry? Don't get me wrong. The cruise was great. The department are thrilled to see me gone for a while, and while I'm never one to turn down a party in my favor... Actually, there are a number of others being honored by the League tonight. That's the thing. I didn't even know the League of Nations even had a police force. Oi, there it is. What? The answer. No one knows of the League of Nations police force. Ah, so you're a secret organization. If that were so, we would be content. However, we are quite desperate to acquire the international recognition we feel that we deserve. Something made difficult by the exclusion of your nation from our organization. So, you invited me here as a PR scheme. Of sorts, by honoring those who have contributed in no small way to the safety of the world. We hope that those honored might spread the word of our noble organization's goals and existence. These uh, honored contributors, they're all American, aren't they? Monsieur Sullivan, what are you implying? Nothing. Just sounds like brown-nosing to me is all. I'm going to assume that that is a compliment. Sure, why not? So... Who else we got here? Well, there's a famous scientist, Dr. Heinrich von Kliegel, and his daughter. A German? From Texas, actually. I suspect he is just, how do you say, eccentric. Sounds like it. So what did he do? His expertise lies in the field of robotics, actually. Automatons, as we call them. Ah, I know a guy you should meet. And the Sheba with the dog is his daughter? Oui, a debutant, she claims. Though I fail to see how anyone from such a place as Texas could claim to be so. Ask me. A lady as pretty as her can call herself a princess if she wants. Ah, speaking of royalty, we are honored to have the King of Belgium with us this evening. Wow, a real king? He is a great fan of America. You may recall that he attempted quite aggressively to acquire your territory of Hawaii during the Treaty of Versailles negotiations. What? But we won the war. As I said, he is a Belgian. They are a silly, silly people. Ah, gotcha. Kind of an annoying little brother you can't get rid of. We are in agreement. Uh, over there in the corner, is that... Another uh... fellow American, we. Oui. The radiant Miss Josephine Baker. I believe you are acquainted with the gentleman she is talking to, no? Moon! Come, let us reunite your boat. Speaking of bananas, I've got one you might like to put up your skirt. <laughs> ah! I... 
I don't think your leopard likes me. Au contraire, Mr. Moon. She just loves the taste of pig. Hey. Hello, Moon. Sully! Hey, partner, you made it. <laughs> oh, hello, Gatsby. I swear this place is a zoo. We invited Mr. Moon as well for his part in the Holchanowski affair. I just happened to be in town for the premiere of The Shadow of the Unknown. Great timing, isn't it? More like crappy timing for you, Monsieur Randolph. Excuse me? Oh, pardon. This is a great silent film star, Henri. Can't say I've ever heard of you. No, of course. If you had, then maybe you would have realized that your film, if you can call it that, was just a piss-diluted copy of my own. What the hell are you talking about? I refer to the number one movie in all of Europe for the past year. Le Shadow der Nun. My God. Is anyone in this country not a bastard? I assure you, messieurs, with perhaps a few rare exceptions, the French people want nothing more than to be good friends with your American people. All right, you Yankee pigs. Put your bloated faces on the floor or we will slaughter you like the cows you are.